Hi, so this is an exciting week for us at Mind and Soul Foundation because on Tuesday we're going to launch a brand new resource, an online space called Headstrong and it's something that I personally have been working on with an amazing team for the last three months so it's a combination of a lot of work and passion and energy and Headstrong is a new online space that's aimed at young people and teenagers and it's all about how you deal with the pressures of real life, even pandemic life. So it's about well-being and managing tough stuff and how you feel good even when life is a bit crazy. And we've just been so blessed by input from a whole bunch of amazing people, professionals, psychologists, doctors, youth workers, leaders, and also loads of young people too who have shared their own stories. So we've got real stories from real people sharing real stuff that they've overcome what their life's journey has actually looked like there's lots of info and articles on all kinds of things young people can get their questions answered and there's also just loads of fun stuff too because we all know what it's like to have those bored moments or low moments or times when your day's just been really rubbish and you need some laughs or distraction or something to lift your mood so keep an eye on that uh, on Tuesday, that's the 1st of September, that's when it launches and it will be at beheadstrong.uk from that day onwards. You'll hear lots more about that if you follow our social media feeds. But Headstrong really came from this vision to tell a better story over this generation of teenagers and young people. This generation who even before COVID-19 were hearing so much negativity about themselves and their future. And then since the coronavirus pandemic, that just escalated. And people are talking about them with so much negativity. They're talking about them as things like a generation who are lost. They're labeling them the corona generation. And you know, when you're a teenager and your identity is still up for grabs, you're still figuring out who you are, what it means to be you, what the world is like. And, and all you're hearing about yourself and your future is negative, it's tough. It's hard to feel positive. And in a world that so often gives the impression that success is about perfection or never struggling, never hitting issues, it's tough in this crazy moment where everything feels like chaos, when so many of us feel like we're just muddling through. And with Headstrong, what we want to do is talk about what real life is actually like and real faith in the real world that is full of challenges. And we want to share with people as some of us as adults what that looks like, what our journeys have been like, what real success is and how it can mean fighting back from challenges and pitfalls and stuff you never expected to be part of your story. And we want to tell a better story for this generation, a story of life, not of a generation who are lost. And it's made me reflect on how we all have to think about what story we believe in this unusual season, because there's so much negativity around that affects all of us. It doesn't matter how old you are. And so it's got me thinking about Romans 12. And there's this verse right at the beginning of Romans 12, verse 2, that's really well known. And it talks about how the stories that our culture is telling, the messages that we're bombarded with, even if we don't realise it, what they say to us. And, and Paul, who was the guy who wrote that letter, he's encouraging us in our life in this modern day world to pause and think about what we're being influenced by. This is how the Passion Translation puts it. He says, stop imitating the ideals and opinions of the culture around you, but be inwardly transformed by the Holy Spirit through a total reformation of how you think. This will empower you to discern God's will as you live a beautiful life satisfying and perfect in his eyes. And just looking a bit deeper into the original language, because Paul wrote this in Greek, which is a much more complex and beautiful language than English. And, and what it says is, is so important. Literally, the word that he uses at the beginning is, is, is translated as this, do not conform. Don't go along with it. Don't go along with what the culture around you is saying fight back against him and I love this message for teenagers because you know one of the things that teenagers have going for them is their natural defiance 
their inclination to challenge things, to ask questions. They are, their brains are figuring out what they think about the world. So they are hardwired to question almost everything, to debate, to argue, to challenge, to read, to investigate, to figure out what do I think? You know, I'm a I'm a parent of a teen as well now. And, and there's that moment in as they grow up, as they come out of childhood, where they suddenly start to question everything that you ever said and taught you, or that's how it can feel like. And that's actually a really positive thing psychologically, because one of their jobs in those adolescent years is to figure out, what do I think? Do I agree with this? And, and they do that in the context of a culture that has some strong messages for them, just like we do even as adults. We're still influenced, if we're not careful, by the dominant messages and narratives of the culture around us. And the Greek word here that's, that Paul uses is, is actually two words stuck together, one which means to identify with and one which is about having an outward shape, to assume the same shape as this thing that we're being told that we identify with. So literally what he's saying is that what we see and hear shapes us unless we stop and recognise that happening. So he's saying, don't let that happen. Don't be moulded by the culture and narrative around you. Recognise that there's a risk of that happening and, and pause, question it. And instead what he says is that we should be transformed. The word he uses there is the one we get our English word metamorphosis from. It's like a literal transformation there's a sense of it not just being an outward thing, it's something from really deep within you. It's a, it's a through and through change. It's not just skin deep. You're not faking it. It really, there's something really basic about this transformation that changes everything. And, and what does it change? Paul says it's about reforming the way that you think. The new international version says it's the renewing of your mind. And and that word renewing, literally, it means to complete a process of being made new by God's power. There's something about the way that our understanding of the world and the culture around us can be totally transformed by the process of what God does with us as we live with God, as we get to know God better, as God's power that is within us through the Holy Spirit shapes and forms us. And, and, and what is it that's being made new? Because that's really important. Like, is it just, is it our minds? Is it our personalities? Is God somehow changing us into new people? No. What's being made new is the next Greek word that Paul uses. And I love this because it's one my dad used to use a lot. I never really realised it came from the Greek. I don't think he did either. But he would say sometimes when he thought you were being stupid or like not thinking think things through, he was a scientist. He would say to me, okay, use your nous. He's like, you're not using your nous. And, and that is literally the Greek word that Paul uses here. And it means your intellect, your ability to reason. God has created us as rational beings with the ability to question, to gather information, to make good decisions, to show wisdom. But what Paul is talking about here is that he's reminding us that we're not just dealing with our human ability to do that. There's a wider source of wisdom than just our culture, context, everything that we're being told, we can pause and reach out to God's bigger and better wisdom. And that that can transform the, co the concept, the understanding that we have of ourselves and the world, but also about the decisions that we make. Because then Paul goes on to say, we can discern God's will, we can understand something, not just of the story our culture is telling, but a much more important story. God's story, God's plan, God's dream for our world. And, and he talks about three things that will happen then to the life that we live, the decisions we make, the actions we play out, that they will be good, they will be pleasing to God. And, and the third thing is that those two things will be seen in their most complete, most perfect form. There's this word that comes up again and again in the New Testament that means when God's dream is reaches its sort of most complete form that it can on this earth. And that's the word that he uses. So when we do this, when we pause, when we defy the things that our culture is saying, when we don't just go along with them without thinking, when we pause and reflect and allow God to transform the way that we see the world, the way that we understand the world. What it means is that we can bring something of God's good stuff 
to the people, to the places, to the spaces that are around us, to the people we're caring for, if we've got kids or other people who rely on us or if we're leaders, to ourselves. Because sometimes the hardest place to do this is when it's your own mind that culture is saying something tough to, when you're comparing yourselves to the messages that you're seeing online or in the media and you're feeling like you come off badly, to step outside of that, to not go along with it, to push into something deeper, something better, something more positive, that God is speaking over you. Maybe right now there are things going on in your life that your culture would say are disaster, but God would say something else, that they're about possibility, that they're about change, that there's a bigger, better story that he could be speaking in. So this week, join me as I pray for the rising generations for teenagers who have so much potential, that they grow their innate ability to be defiant, to resist the messages spoken over them, to reach out for more positive messages, to hear God's story and God's song that's spoken over them. We want to enable our young people, not disable them. We want to resource and equip them to manage the challenges of their time. And right now for you, if you're watching, I just want to pray, Father God, that if you're struggling right now, if you're feeling like a message is being spoken over you that is tough, if life has thrown difficult things right now, if you're fighting what feels like a message that's about despair and gloom and darkness and challenge, I just pray right now that you'd be able to pause and reach out to God and hear his better story, that that would transform your mind, your perspective, your understanding of your situation and enable something within you that can change the way that you live, the way that you view yourself and the impact that you have on the people and places around you. I just speak hope and the good things of God into the situations of everybody who's watching this right now. In Jesus' name, amen.